First off, the Tennessee Volunteers have piloted their future. That's right. Mm. Tennessee and Pilot um, have struck one of the largest sponsorship deals in college history. Now, uh, it should be noted that that's what we're being told. We do not have numbers on the deals yet. On the deal yet, uh, sources are saying that it's one of the largest in college history. Uh, it does make sense, though, with the added uh, revenue stresses that these colleges are going to have with uh, giving twenty percent, roughly, of revenue to players, along with funding one hundred and five scholarships versus eighty five scholarships. Uh, yeah, it's it's only getting more expensive. Well, um, pilot now becomes the presenting partner of the Neyland, Neyland Stadium renovation project and official travel stop of the mm -hmm. Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, the agreement, Aaron, is in place for 20 years Ooh. and uh, could extend even beyond that. But I, I, I got to be honest, I saw some people trying to clown it. Um, we actually Why? do... Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I, because yeah, dude, money, get that, get, give me that oil money all day long. I mean, this, this is, this is an arm. Tennessee has been ahead of a lot of this stuff, which mm -hmm. is, which That's is fair. why, like, I, I continue to say, and you kind of, are, I think you're a little bit slower here, T, on this one. I think Tennessee over the past three or four years has really positioned themselves extremely well from getting past the Jeremy Prude era, which was a freaking disaster. Disaster. Yeah. Called it from day one. I did not anticipate Hypo and that program to get away from that stench and to now to be on the forefront of NIL to, 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 we know they got the money for facilities and then now with naming rights and things like this to generate more revenue that way as well. Like kudos to them. Like I think Tennessee has knocked it out of the park the past four years with a lot of the changes going on in college football. Uh, I was definitely slower on the uptake on Tennessee. You are right about that. Um, and I was a hypo doubter as well, because if you looked at his time at UCF, it went downhill every mm -hmm. single year. And so I assumed he was someone who took over a great spot, but was not that guy. Now, obviously, Josh White believed in him and it has paid massive dividends. That's the AD, right? Josh White. I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. um, no, no. Also, AD's Danny White. Danny White. Danny White. Excuse me. Danny, Danny White. White. My bad. Okay. You know, hey, 50 percent. Not bad. Um, it's about my completion percentage in NCAA. Uh, no, so I, I I think I think actually if Tennessee ends up being really good and they end up making the playoff, I believe we need to do a deep dive on the power of democracy mm. and just how awful the Tennessee situation was a few years ago. Remember, awful. they tried to hire Greg Schiano. Good. And the people literally took to the streets and revolted. Mm -hmm. And then it felt like they just did this kind of last second switch up to hypo. That was kind of mad. It was like, it was a, it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, also, we could do a case study on the fact that Tennessee literally weaponized the NCAA to get out of Jeremy Pruitt. Yeah. Like they were like, Oh shit, you want to get this guy in trouble? You want more info? <laughs> yeah. Like what you need dog. We mm -hmm. got you. It's literally the only time you should ever cooperate with the ncaa it's when you want to yeah but then they turned around this past year and gave the middle finger and said come after me let's let's see what you got and then they because they got out of the they, whole nil situation with nico because they don't want to fire their coach for cause yeah. you only work with the ncaa oh, if you want somebody fired well, you i'm just saying like if there's a perfect them. example of like how to to work both sides of it of using them to your yes. advantage and then yes. kind of just saying like who the hell do you think you are you're really going to come after me tennessee's won both of those for the past five years yeah, but look, here's the pilot symbol on Neil. I mean, I think that looks good. great. It's yeah. unassuming, not bad. There will be way worse. I uh, thought it was going to be like the legit pilot. Me too. No logo, yellow. The colors, the whole shebang. Like, this is very subtle. It's, this is That's fine. what I'm saying. This yeah. matches and blends in perfectly mm -hmm. with the field. This is great on, uh, on all counts, honestly. I didn't realize this, that the Haslam family are uh, massive Tennessee boosters, and that's where this all comes mm -hmm. from. Uh, Jimmy Haslam, of course, his father, Jim Haslam, founded pilot back in 1958. So there you go. John Doman says Tennessee's always the offseason national champions. Um, well, but no. now they actually do have a national championship to their name. I mean, they won in baseball finally. So they kind of, cause like, look, I talk as much shit to Tennessee as anybody does. I've made all those baseball wrestling promos where mm -hmm. I, you know, they're like, oh, you're the everything school. What is that? Everything but a ring. Well, now they finally got a ring. It's not the yep. football ring, but uh, it looks 
Like they're going to be pretty. How about this? So we kind of touched on this on my radio show this morning. Um, you have the big three in the SEC, and mm -hmm. then you have you know your your Ole Miss, Tennessee, Mizzou, LSU. Mm -hmm. Um, at least one of those teams will end up being disappointing. You know, will 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 underachieve. Which mm -hmm. one of those teams is the pretender? LSU. I know. I, LSU. I unfortunately, yeah, I unfortunately LSU. arrived. And, 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 and it's unfortunate because they the, the schedule Missouri will miss favor schedule. I think Tennessee has the three tough games that they could be nine and three. They lose those ones. You know, Georgia, Tennessee, and maybe oh, was it was Oklahoma as well in, in there. Yeah. Like I still think the schedule with their talent is like nine and three, I wouldn't say is a disappointment, right? Like maybe Tennessee fans are in the mindset of we're a national championship caliber team. We got the quarterback not, this year. Like, not, like what, 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 what is disappointment? Not making the playoffs? It is nine and three would be, I think, neutral for Tennessee fans because it's now I think you'd probably need to win a bowl game to get to, like you can't be eight and four like last year and then win a yeah. bowl game. I'm talking about nine and three regular season. Yes. Um, I would say that's neutral because you'll set up to win 10 games and it is, it, it's building on the consistency that you haven't shown in forever. And I'm a big believer in like, if you want to win championships, consistency has to come first every now and then you strike. Lightning, well, it's whatever. also, it's also building on the fact that Nico's a first year starter. So now you have the narrative of like, we just won nine games and Nico's a yeah. first year starter. If he performs well throughout the season, he'll be the best quarterback coming back in the SEC next year. So then you're like, all right, we got this kid, Nico, balled out. We got the nine wins, best returning guy. Let's put some more pieces around him. And next year's kind of our year. Um, so I think not, but 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 so like I think they expect 10 and two, I guess is what I'm I getting do. at. I do. I but agree. but nine and three is not like they're not so used to winning now that not nine and three would still be a better year than he had last year. Uh T Bob said uh, and Tommy says naturally optimistic T Bob, unless he's doing national talk stuff. No, guys, I'm just I'm just being objective. If I look at Ole Miss, Mizzou, Tennessee, and LSU, um, and Ole Miss and Mizzou, I see two teams that have a returning super experienced quarterback, which is always going to lead me to believe that you're more consistent. Uh, also, two complete teams. Mizzou has an easiest schedule of the bunch. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss is the most complete team. Uh, Lane Kiffin already would have made the playoffs two of the last three years. Okay, mm -hmm. like. So I, I, that, that makes sense. You're like, okay. Then it's down to Tennessee and LSU. And I see that. Uh, I think LSU has more question marks. It's not to say they can't be answered positively, yep. but objectively, um, Tennessee has an elite defensive line. Um, I think both secondaries are kind of whatever. Maybe Tennessee is better. I don't know much about it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I think LSU's offensive line is better, but I do think uh, Tennessee's offensive line is still very good. And then I think in Nico and Garrett, you have two supreme talents with a mm -hmm. ton of potential that are both unproven. So it's like, yeah, I just barely objectively, I, I think Tennessee's a bit more proven on paper. And I guess, honestly, it's mainly because of James Pierce and Amari Thomas and that D-line. So maybe Harold Perkins offsets James Pierce. Again, guys, this is going to be in the eye of the beholder. I'm not mm -hmm. being overly negative. Uh, well, I would I say those are th put it on paper that LSU is probably the, the least Jesus. solid of the bunch.